Hey guys, after a full summer of entertaining, Sheila and I like to say goodbye to summer <laughs> with a fall harvest dinner. It's a little bit bittersweet, but we have a lot of holiday parties to look forward to. We're starting things off today with a great DIY candle project. This is super, super simple and something you can do up to a week in advance before your dinner party. Especially when you're serving eight to 10 guests, it also serves as an awesome takeaway gift. So let's get started. Here's what you'll need. Wax flakes. I like to use soy because it's natural and doesn't create smoke when you burn, unlike paraffin wax. In terms of amount of wax, you multiply the ounces of your container by two. So if you have an eight ounce mason jar like this one, you'll need to melt 16 ounces of wax. You'll also need sturdy candle wicks, stickers to adhere at the base of the jar and a stabilizer like this one to keep the wick centered. I bought these as a kit online. Lastly, you'll need to pick up your essential oils. Here, we're using lavender and lemon as they are two of my favorite scents. On the side here, we have our double boiler, which we are going to use to melt the wax. While that's heating up, let's get started on the jar. First, I add the double-sided sticker to the bottom center of the jar, then the wick, and slide on the stabilizer piece. When it looks like the wax is melting, you'll need to stir the wax frequently with a wooden spoon until you see all the white bits disappear. Then you can remove it from the heat and leave it to cool. Depending on the amount of wax, it can take up to 20 to 30 minutes to cool and harden at room temperature. When you notice a film building on the surface, this is when you should add the essential oils. You don't want to add the oils when the wax is too hot or the oils will evaporate. For an eight ounce jar, you can add approximately 10 drops of oil, but also remember that the quality of the oil you buy does make a difference. The higher the quality, the less you need as the concentration will be stronger. Once it's all poured, you want to clean off any excess wax that might have dripped and then set it aside to settle. This should take up to about an hour. As you can see, we've managed to cut all the wicks and assemble our jars with their name tags. Each one is labeled with their scent. Now that we're all done this, why don't we go out and check on Sebastian? Wow, those turned out fantastic. I know, aren't they super cute? I think the guests are going to love them. Yeah, they look really, really, really good. What are you up to? I'm getting ready to set the table. You want to help me? Sure. So one of the things that I like to do before we set the table is to actually align all the chairs. The reason I do that is because the place settings are going to get set based on where the chairs are. So if the chairs are out of line, then it means that everything's going to be out of whack. This way it's really simple and I don't have to adjust things last minute. We wanted to make the table nice and bright using gemstone colors like purples, reds and greens. Today I'm using plaid as it gives that country chic feel while making it easy to match other items such as napkins of almost any accent color. Charger plates make the dinner a little more formal and I love using them. This smoky gray color pairs well with our elegant harvest theme. And if you decide to buy another color of flatware besides traditional stainless steel, copper is super trendy and pairs really well with other metals so you can easily mix and match. Now on to dinnerware. I'm absolutely in love with these very cool gray lace plates. I found them online and I think they really give a nice modern clean aesthetic to our table, especially with the nice warm hue of gray. So there's a bunch of different napkin folds you can do, but because we're in a casual outdoor environment, I'm going to show you a really simple one called the box pleat fold. Basically, what you do is you fold the napkin lengthwise in half, then you do it again, then you simply flip it over, fold one last time, and there you go. Done. Just before I finish with the centerpieces, I'm adding the gift favorites that Sheila made earlier onto each place setting. For our fall centerpieces, I was lucky enough to find these fantastic green pumpkins at the market. What I then did is I hollowed them out and I added the green foam. The reason for the green foam is number one, because it keeps the stems nicely hydrated, but also it keeps them in place, which helps me build structure for our centerpiece. So I'm starting out with some of the larger leaves and basically I'm just gonna poke them in there on the base to create a little bit of volume around the bottom. And then finally, my florals are going right on top because I don't want anybody to see the green foam that I'm using underneath. And for the finishing touches of the table, I'm adding my center pieces, one at this end and one at this end. We've used lanterns before, but for tonight, we bought some larger mason jars to match the party favors, and then we added battery-operated twinkle lights inside each one of them to give off a nice glow. So there you 
you have it guys, everything you need to know to host a fall harvest dinner in the backyard from centerpieces to table settings and of course, some really fun takeaways for your guests. If you liked the video, make sure to press like and to follow us. Thanks very much guys. Bye for now.